What's going on, Faith Chapel students? It's your boy, Chris, and we are so glad that you are here today. Now, before we hop into service, I got a few announcements for you. Now, listen up. If you are a senior and you're looking for scholarships, make sure you log on to faithchapel.net slash scholarships for our scholarship opportunities. You got it? Cool. Now, second, we invite you online or in person January 27th at 7 p.m. Central to be a part of our first ever worship night. And we're calling it the Miracle Room. This will be our time where we worship, we set aside our agenda for God's, and we create a culture of prayer which will help us stay above the attacks of the enemy. Now for more info and other great content, make sure you follow Faith Chapel students on Instagram and we hope to see you there. Now lastly, let me pray. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you just for being who you are, Lord. Thank you for every single blessing. And Lord, we thank you for building us and growing us and pushing us toward the things that you have for our lives, Lord. So Lord, we, we ask you right now in this time of worship that you break anything that is on us, release us from anything that is hindering us. And Lord, any attack of the enemy, we cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, what's up everybody? Oh, wow. This is, uh, what, uh, January the 15th? Yeah, it's January the 15th, and um, we, uh, tomorrow is uh, what we call, or we celebrate Dr. King's uh, birthday on tomorrow. And um, I know most of you all will probably be out of school on tomorrow, but we don't, we don't want to ever forget uh, what uh, people who have gone before us have done for us. Um, you know, we don't live in the past, but we do need to remember history or we need to know history so that we don't repeat things in the future. And so that's how it is. Um, what God sent his word to us, God sent his word to us so that we can have information and begin to build a relationship with an amazing God so that we can learn from those who who listen to God and and the results that they were able to uh, develop and acquire because they listen to God and then we are also able to see those who did not listen to God and the results from those who did not listen to God and and then we're also able to see how those who did not listen to God how they were able to bounce back when they got back connected to God. Like, I, you know, that's the kind of God we have. We have a God who's always looking for ways to get us back to him. He's always, there's always been a, a way of him wanting to uh, build this us having trust in him and believing what he says, regardless of what anyone else says, regardless of what we, we're experiencing at the moment, regardless of what we're feeling, he's wanting us to know that we can trust in this amazing God who's always, always had our back. And so, um, and I love um, what we're doing because we're listening to our founding pastor. He laid down this, the, 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 the foundation of our, our church, the word of God, the word of God being the answer for anything you may face in life. God's word is the foundation and understanding why it's important for us to dig deep why it's important for us to know the word of God, why it's important for us to um, understand the word of God. So we must make sure that we dig deep into this, um, into the word of God, into what God has said before us. And so, um, you know, so, so we, we're going back 
because we we have our new lead pastor, our lead pastor, Pastor Michael K. Moore is our lead pastor. Come on, y'all, let's give it up for our lead pastor. Yeah, drop it up in the chat. Um, if you're on campus, uh, just yell it out, whatever you want to do. So, but we we give it up for our lead pastor, and so, um, and so I, I wanted us to not lose what our founding pastor said in December. So that's what we're doing um, this month. Um, and so, I, you know, depending on how we, it goes, uh, uh, it may go into next month. No promises there, but depending on how this goes, it, it may go into next month. But right now, I want to really make sure that we dig deep and understand the word of God. And and your assignment now, your assignment is to read through Mark chapter four this whole month. Um, well, I'm not asking you to go through it. Um, like you can read a verse a day and ask God, what does that mean? God, analyze what that means. Like when you're reading it, I want you to, to, to really ask God questions, ask questions. Uh, look up words. Um, make sure you get an understanding of the word. Because once you get an understanding of the word, because you're getting the knowledge, everybody just just by uh, reading it, you're getting knowledge. But then you you dive deep to get understanding, and then wisdom is how to apply it in your everyday life. How do I how do I live out the things that I just read or the things that I just learned. So when when I'm faced with a situation, how do I live that out? When I'm faced with it, what do I do? When somebody's coming against me that is uh, totally opposite than what God just said, what is my response to that? So um, what we're going to do, we're going to pray and then we're going to dive deep into uh, the next, well, we're still in Wayside because we didn't finish that. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into wayside and then we're gonna go a little bit further all right all right so i'm gonna pray and then we're gonna jump back in father in the name of jesus i thank you so very much for all of those and all of us here today help us to really grasp what we need to grasp today holy spirit i thank you right now for causing us to really understand the, the knowledge that you bring into us, helping us to really understand it. And God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for um, uh, the wisdom on how to live it out and how to apply this to our everyday lives. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all, we're going to jump into pastor was just talking uh, Lee, uh founding pastor <laughs> i'm about to get used to that but our founding pastor was just saying you know um, um he's sort of he's trying to get us and so we're we're still in the wayside on the wayside ground we're on the wayside ground okay we're on the wayside so um there are four there are four of these grounds the wayside the stone stony ground the thorny ground and then the good ground and so what we want to do is want to, we want to um, try to get to the stony ground today. But if not, you know, it is what it is. We'll get to it next week. All right. So let's go into the wayside ground. Let's go, y'all. Because it's subtle, difficult to detect, hard to recognize. That's the way Satan operates. And, and it's an organized strategic plan to separate you from God's word. Imagine Satan and his demons with a clipboard. And he's instructing his, his, his followers, demons, he says, now we have an objective and our object, objective team is to separate them, God's people, from from." God's word. That's our major goal. That's our major goal. And I want you to watch their lives. And I want you to see how we can set up a strategy 
to separate them from the word. And once you get the strategy, we're going to come back and we're going to have a plan, action plans, to separate them from God's word. Can you imagine if you knew demons came to your house every day and they are watching you to get a plan to separate you from God's word. How would that impact your life? If you knew that there was somebody spinning 24 seven trying to figure out how to defeat you. Listen, that was, okay, so let's just start right here. How many of you all have, have you ever thought about someone who was just out to get you? Or, or, or let me ask you this. Have you been like strategizing? But have you ever strategized before on how you was going to get somebody else? Like, we ain't even talking about somebody who's trying to get you. Have you? <laughs> have you ever thought about, oh, I'm going to get them. Oh, yeah, I'm about to get them. I'm about to, and I'm going I'm to get them and they ain't going to even know I, I got them. Right? So, have you ever done that? I, I remember um, watching this show with my kids. Um, it, it was called Mean Girls, right? And it, it, it is, 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 is a comedy, but it has so many truths. It, so many truths to this particular movie. And so I was watching this movie and there was this one of the characters who um, so she was she was like the uppity kid who made it hard for everybody else and so there were these other kids who didn't like her who were strategizing on how to get her back or get at her because she was so mean and so nasty and so ugly right uh, not ugly physically but her attitude and uh, her behavior was just nasty and ugly and so so what they did was they came up with this strategy and so she was wanting to kind of get in shape or lose weight or whatever and so they came up with this strategy to they told her this particular thing if you eat this particular thing it was going to cause you to uh lose weight but the thing she was eating it caused her to gain weight and that's what they wanted her they wanted her to get out of control and get to a place where everybody would kind of kind of start coming to her right so so it was a subtle strategy it didn't happen overnight and that's what our enemy is doing with us he is subtly strategizing to get you in a place where you once he gets you out there he's gonna pounce on you it's subtle it's subtle that's why you got to get in the word of god remember i need you i need you to, to we're focusing this month on matthew on i'm sorry mark chapter four so I need you to read it every day. I'm not even ask you to read the whole chapter every day. If you do, great. If you don't, great. I'm just asking you to get a rhythm every day. Okay, I'm gonna get up, read Mark chapter four, verse one. Mark chapter four, verse two. Mark chapter four, verse three, next day. Mark chapter four, I'm gonna read five verses today. I'm gonna read the next five, next. I, I need you to do that, all right? so. All right, let's let's jump back in. Let's jump back in because I want you to understand that someone strategy the enemy. You have an enemy who is always strategizing to try to get you out of the place where God wants you to be. Always, 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 always. All right, here we go. Let's jump back in. Subtle, say subtle. subtle. In the parable, Satan is only mentioned one time. The rest of the way, he's not mentioned at all. And the Holy Spirit is not mentioned him at all because he wants you to know how he works. He doesn't work through an announcement. So we only know about this wayside group 
we know that it was hardness. It was a resistance. See, some people, they don't receive the word because their hearts have been hardened. Hardened through personal experiences, abuse, neglect, uh, uh, all this up stuff that happened. Why did you let this happen to me, God? I don't want to hear God because God put this on. The hurt and the disappointment hardened their heart. Some are hardened by bad teaching. There is. Okay, so so I love what Pastor says. He, he He's breaking this thing down. He's a founding pastor. is breaking this thing down. He's, he's saying, look, He's tell us why the word is falling by the wayside because their hearts are hardened. The scripture tells us that their hearts had gotten hardened. Like that. Have you ever heard somebody say that God stuff don't work? It works if you work it. It 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 some, some people say that school work that this school work doesn't work. It works if you work. It's been working for years. <laughs> it's been working for decades. It, it was working before you even showed up on the scene. So why would you say something ain't working when you only been here the amount of time that you've been here? And then did you give it all that you should have given it? Right? So, so. Is it that it's not working or is it that you're not working it? Because if you're not working it, then you're going to get out of what you put in it. Come on, guys. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come. So, so their hearts got hardened and, and there are things that we blame God for that it it was not God at all. It was not God at all. Your parents told you, hey, don't hang around them. You end up hanging around them. You get end up getting into trouble. Then you say, God, get me out of this. Well, how can God get you out when he was trying to keep you out in the beginning when you when you when your parents told you, I don't want you hanging around them? And you end up doing it anyway, and then you get into the, the the situation. Now you want God to get you out of a situation that you didn't put yourself in, where He was all alone trying to make sure you don't even get in it. Certain things. What we need to do. What what I would do is God. I didn't put myself in this crazy mess. <laughs> God. I ask you right now, I humble myself. I ask you right now, right now to show me a way out of this situation that I have put myself in. God, and I thank you right now for hearing me. God, I thank you right now for hearing me. Help me in this. See, 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 I moved from a hard heart to a, a heart that needs somebody to get me out of this. And so I don't need to be acting like it's your fault when it was all my fault because I took the I took the bait of what somebody else told me to do when I should have listened to what my parents or what God told me to do. Come on, y'all. Thank God. We we putting the blame on God. Some of this. A lot of this stuff is us. A lot of this stuff is us. Okay, let's go. An anti-Bible uh, attack going on right now. Some are hardened because of poor role models. Woo. Their parents. Okay, so so um, Pastor talked about there there are these um, um, things going out that's this anti-God. Uh, lie that's going on in the earth right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 verbiage. It's things that are being said that are just totally against the word of God. Totally against the word of God. But 
if you don't know what the word of God says about situations and you're not diving deep into it, when the thing shows up, when people, when commercials show up, when politicians say certain things, when laws start laws start being implemented in the earth, then we think that those things are right and those things are true. But if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then it's not. At the end of the day, it's not. And so we take it on a lot. Even, even the music, the music, listen to the words of the music that you're listening to. And we're going to dive sometime this year, we're going to dive into music and lyrics this year because you the beat is fire, but the beat with some, some lyrics that don't line up with the word of God is trash. And you got to understand that you got to, if, if it's, and I'm not saying they got to say God, all, I'm not saying that. But the principles need to lead you down a good path, not a destructive one. Anything that's leading you down a destructive path is trash. Yep, I said it. I said it. I said anything that's leading you down a destructive path is trash. So the word of God must be our foundation. It must be our foundation. So, all right, let's, stop, let's jump back in. Church came to church, on, but at home they were different. On, Poor role models on, in the church. The pastor going with everybody, the pastor sleeping with everybody. I don't want to hear anything about God. I watched my pastor run through the church. They were hardened by poor role models. They were hardened by Christians who were not living like Christians. So Jesus tell us that. All right, so he talked about role models. He talked about um, people in the home. He talked about role models in the church. And then he talked about people who um, said they Christians, but then always live like Christians. And I'm, I'm one to say, um, have I always demonstrated the Christian behavior? No. No. And, 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 and did it potentially um, hurt somebody? Yes. Yes. Um, and so, um, and, and the thing, the thing about it is once you recognize that you didn't do it, you know, because some of you all may be saying, yeah, I, I say I'm a Christian, but then I'm I may um, do this, or I may do this, or I may operate differently than what the Scripture says. Have ha, has that been me before? Absolutely, absolutely. Should should I have not gone off on somebody, or even gone off on my kids, and and it didn't represent God? It was it was all all flesh or anger or have I done that with my wife? Absolutely. Um, and it didn't, it didn't represent scripture. It didn't represent the word of God. It didn't represent the script. Have I, have I, have I, have I not done what I was supposed to do? Yeah. Was, was, was my heart maybe hardened and didn't receive the word to cause my heart to to till the ground of my heart so that I wouldn't go into those absolutely and 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 the way I I I learned how to work through those things or those moments are to to own it hey I'm I'm sorry uh to my to my girls I'm sorry, daddy shouldn't have said that like that. To my wife, um, yeah, the way I said that, that one, right? And, and most of the times, um, 
she had to say, hey, I didn't like the way you said that. And then, you know, now you feeling all like, who you talking to? You like, like you feeling that and, and, and learning, having to learn like, wow, I impacted her like that by the way I said, or even a, a facial expression. Cause sometimes y'all, you know, sometimes you can have a facial expression. Somebody saying something some of you like, and then some of y'all be doing like this. Like, oh, I know you ain't talking to me. See, it's, it's stuff like that, that keeps the heart hard. Stuff like that, that keeps the heart hard. But when you allow the word of God to come in and penetrate, like, oh, oh, uh, yeah, sweetie, you right. I did have some feelings behind that. Um, I did have some emotions behind it. And I, I should not have done that. I should not have said that. I should not have, or I should not have, or I should not have. I've been there. I've been on that side of not representing Christ like I should. And 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 the, the the more I'm talking about it now, I'm feeling like 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 not just because it's one thing to say I'm sorry, but what you sorry about? What, what what did you do? What are you sorry about? So not just saying I'm sorry, but you know, I'm sorry. Saying I'm sorry, but not just stopping there. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that I talked to you in that type of voice. And I'm sorry that I raised my voice at you. I'm sorry that I rolled my eyes at you. I'm sorry that I cussed you out. Now, I don't curse. I'm just, I'm using whatever that sorry may be for somebody else. I'm sorry that I punched you in the face because I have issues, because I was angry because of, because this, this, this was going on with me. And I, I should not have touched you at all. And I apologize for allowing myself to get out of control, or I'm sorry that I allowed myself to say mean, nasty, disrespectful words to you because I was in so much pain and I was hurt because I felt like I was, I, I, I was, I was, whatever I was, was, but that was not your fault. That was mine. And I apologize. See, see, it's you owning it. And once you own it, you start to, the spirit of God can start chipping at your heart, but you got to own it. I think we're going to stop, stop right here, guys. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of jewels that pastor said in this, that, he wasn't able to really unpack in the time that he had, but I want to unpack it because the more we're able to understand how to, so I said pastor, but our founding pastor, the more we're able to unpack the word and why it's foundational. It's not that it's just, God just didn't say it. The word of God is the answer just to say it. There is a, a wealth of knowledge deeply rooted in that and we gotta dive deep to pull out and extract those principles and those tools so that we can clothe ourselves with the word so when people see us they say oh i know they've been around they've been around the word they've been around jesus because they're they're different than everybody else and i want what they have I want what they have. I want what they have. So we're going to stop here. I'm going to pray. 
But I want you to stay on for small groups because we're going to jump into groups. I want you to just, I want you to open up in the groups. And I want you to, you, you, I want you to share what you've been getting out of Mark chapter, chapter four. Just you personally, I want you to talk about what you've been getting out of Mark chapter four. But then what I want also, I want us to talk about what we got from what we heard. And what is one thing we got, one thing we need to change, one one thing we need to start doing, okay? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so very much for your word. I thank you, Lord God, for these young people. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're helping us to dig deep with the foundation of the word and why it's important for us to walk in your word because your word is the answer god bless y'all we love y'all man y'all y'all enjoy your day off tomorrow right do something really 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 cool with your um for your folks if they got to go to work tomorrow then clean the house for them it really doesn't take that long to clean the house so if you if you just knock out 30 to to an hour to just go ahead and knock out and just clean up the house and then have some nicely cooked for them when they got back if you can cook if you can't then leave it alone but you know just gotta do something real nice for them right all right god bless you all see you next time bye yo wasn't that a great message now it's time for one of my favorite parts of service which is tithes and offerings repeat this after me i'm a tither and a giver i believe that every seed i sow whether it's money or time i will receive a thousand fold return in jesus name amen now if you would like to give tithes or offerings we have four ways First, you can give through our Faith Chapel app. Second, you can give online. Third, you can mail it or you can give through text. Well, guys, look, that's all I got for y'all today. Look for the people that's on YouTube. We hope to see you next week. But for the people that's on Zoom, sit tight because we are now transitioning to small groups. Y'all already know who it is. It's your boy, Chris, and I'll see you next time.